Maybe I, I quickly talk about why I decided for Superbase or why I thought it is the best solution in my case and as an indie developer. Probably you have, I don't know, people develop their own API. Is there anyone who is starting an own API and also works on the front end as well? Okay, yeah. Then you know how complicated it can get. So, yeah, I was one of those and I started to... Uh, I have to actually say I thought on Firebase first, but I did not like what they actually, the kind of data, your data get basically uh, lost in there. So you cannot retrieve your data once it's in, you're basically hooked on uh, Firebase. And I didn't like it, so I started to develop my own API, but then I noticed, oh my God, this is quite time consuming. And by poor luck, I stumbled on Superbase and I, I so, oh, that thing actually solves most of my problems and not, why not try to integrate it? And yeah, that's how I ended up with Superbase. And that's also why I can say, hey, I can highly recommend it when you're an independent developer. So uh, what I want to go through is actually that how you set up Superbase quickly. So a quick introduction, how you opened, how you get running. Then I also prepared a simple application that actually shows all the basics. So you can later actually get it from a GitHub. You can download it and try out by yourself. And I will also uh, try to present according to that app. So uh, yeah, how it works. So as you can see, it's like you have a, you can have a database, you have authentication, you have a storage and real time. And, and basically we all uh, checked it out later on. And yeah, as said, I'm gonna, together we set up this live here, an instance of Superbase, then configure So I show you that on my application, how I did that, so that you're aware of it, and then how to uh, create the connection. Then yeah, with email, password authentication. Social authentication is a little bit a thing. I think it would just be too immense and time consuming, but it's not that difficult to implement if you want that. Then real-time database sync with, I have, actually the application I prepared is kind of a real-time chat application, mini application. It's very simple, very simple, but it kind of it works. Also, I can show you what I love on Superbase or best the set on the Postgres are the triggers. Then file upload, file retrieval, and yeah, security permission with role level security. So I think the best thing is just let's get started with, uh, oops, the escape key disappeared. I need now your help. Yeah. My escape key disappeared. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you go. Oh, yeah. But does it not stop the recording? No, fine. No? Okay, okay, good. So I would like to start first with how to actually set up your instance on Superbase for the bots. So if you go to superbase.com, you can just simple. If you go there, of course, you need to make an account. So you log in, it's quite simple, just with email and whatever. And when you go then, later you end up in the dashboard. And you can create your new project. It's, it's, it's quite very abusive. Just click it. Click your organization, you want to create it. Create the project name. So. I think I called it iOS meter, so iOS meter. Uh, the password, I would recommend that you copy that. It's for the database. You might need it. You don't need it right now, but you can always raise reset it if necessary. But you, what is always important is to get the highest performance is you choose your location. So we are here in uh, yep, in Korea, Seoul, and then we just click here, create new project. So, the only thing you basically need here is, you need your link. Ooh. 
You have here the URL. You need that, and you need your Anon key. So, and I will quickly go switch back to the app I, I developed and show how to integrate that. So here an example, I created in a file like that with constants and you would paste like the URL, you would go and paste it in here. Basically, copy it, paste it in. Oops. Just sorry. That's what happened. In case it happened to you, you can always go to settings and API, and then you can retrieve again those keys you need. You need the anon key as mentioned before. You copy that one. You plug it in here. So you basically said, when you want to connect to the Superbase client, you basically need to download the, um, the what it would call, the dependency package. You download the uh, Superbase, you get that by going to the, 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 the GitHub repository and click you can just copy here, with copy the link here. I think you all know how to do that. I don't need to explain it in detail. And add it to the dependencies. So you would just click it, install, add it, and then, you know, all options I would recommend. Just get it in. And once you have that, you can then safely connect to Superbase. So basically, this app would uh, right away connect, but what we not made yet is setting up all the, we did not set up yet the database, so we do that now. And also, for testing, you should go back to your dashboard, go in your project, So, uh, setting up a database, of course you can do manually, but I prepared already a script because it is uh, quite a time consuming process and I don't want to just bother you by creating that. So I already I, uh, created the, by the way, this is included in the file, so in the GitHub file repository, it is included, you just copy paste that. can go in this SQL editor it called, paste it in, and run it, and hopefully no error comes. Okay, good, no error, that's wonderful. So uh, what basically happened here, it set up the whole structure for the database. It's like a simple, uh, I don't know if anyone works with pass, uh, Postgres and experience, Postgres, I think you would know what that means to just creating tables per SQL language. That's all what I did. So, and now you see here on the tables, there's like one I call messages and the other one is the profile. The profile is kind of necessary when you want to have more details. I will explain that too in more later on in detail. Then what we do now, we configure it quickly. Where is it? It's on the providers. 
email. What I do here, it is following if I uh, start a sample, you don't want, the, when you develop your conforming email and security email, you should turn off so you can test with emails that not exist, otherwise it would send a, re a confirmation email and then it would be quite uh, tough to yeah, check. So that's why I just disabled it quickly. Okay. So, okay, now let's roll the ball. So now we should be ready. So what happened here basically, with authentication. So I, I created here a, a module called authentication. So basically, again, check it out when you download the GitHub. It uh, should explain everything. It should work just fine. Um, you can simple sign in with email. That's actually a, a function here from the client auth sign in. You can choose email. So it, it's very simple to integrate. So when you have like example here, the sign in view, I also sign in, sign up view. So I, I create it in a way that uh, it's, it's uh, usable for either or. And you basically what you do, you put your username and everything, the email, and then you just forward it to the sign in with email. And it, it's, it's really that simple to set up. It's, it's, it doesn't take, once you have the code, even you can use my file as a template, so it is really very easy to set up. So I did not spend much time. The only thing is maybe how you need to structure your database, have to first figure that out. And once you have that, it's, it's really super nice to integrate. So uh, what you can see here is like, why not just checking out? I just run it quickly and then you see, uh, how it works. By the way, did uh, anyone figure out why there come error message, but there are actually no error messages? This has suddenly happened with Xcode, coming error message? No, no, nothing. You said the answer, Xcode. Xcode, that's the answer? It's just Xcode? Just Xcode? Okay. There it starts. It's an older computer. Hmm. Okay, there we are. <laughs> okay, finally, finally, finally. Okay. Oh, yeah. So again, you have to file, you can really examine it and check it out. And uh, I try to copy a little bit the uh, uh, Superbase theme. So it's, uh, so what you can do is like, you have to, not an account, so we just, you can choose a username, whatever, I don't know. I always, for fun, I'm German and I use always this Hans Wurst. And you can do the same like, uh, again, as explained before, I just turned off the email check. So whatever email I use is just fine to log in because there's no uh, checking. So I not get a control. Internet must be slow. What happened? Okay, as I said, it's a very simple uh, kind of uh, real-time chat application with uh, yeah, just one simple chat thing. There's no rooms or whatever. But if everything works now according, it just should. Let's see if everything works. Oh no, what happened? Yeah. 
that's actually also and that's a cool thing on Superbase. It has this uh, role security level. So if you do something, if you not have the ID for it, you cannot do it. So it doesn't allow you to uh, actually. Uh, you cannot, example, uh, with role level security, you cannot override someone else's uh, role. So it's fantastic when you want to have it like secured. With, and obviously we have now this issue. Let me quickly check out why that. What what did it say? It's security policy for tail message. Let's see, what is the problem? Are we kind of... Is it coming? <laughs> oh, I found... I found the bug. Should not say select, it should say insert. Sorry for that, I guess. I can insert it. Let's say select. Dude. I need to fix that one. Guess. And then we have the four. Typo. That's about happen when you do copy paste. <laughs> so do. Okay, that should. Jeez, that's embarrassing. Check it. Yeah, you want me, don't delete the other one. <laughs> I make it now. Manually. Oh, goodness. See if it's for true safe. Okay, now let's check it if it works if it works or not. Okay, wow. oh. Oh. Ah. very embarrassing. Yeah, and it's basically this one would theoretically if I Let's see if it works or not. I had a little bit unlucky. It, it's quite a new. They revised the SDK, and it, it sometimes it loses the connection. I have no idea why it happened. But uh, as I said, it's, it should be like a normal chat application where you can send because that message goes to the server and comes back, and then it appears. So it's not like uh, appears right away. It, it goes to the server and then it comes back. And the same thing if if you delete. It will delete first on the server and then it comes back and it will be deleted on your uh, device. So yeah, it looks like it, 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 it works. Yeah, okay, that's gone. 
Now let's move forward. Also what we have here, like example with the profile with uploading, when you have like data files, like you can upload image. I have momentarily just uh, like, yeah, waterfall. Let's choose that one. So what now happened, I, I loaded it. And when, as soon as I save it, it's supposed to send, okay, no problem, that's good. It sends it actually to the storage. So we have here the storage. And it should appear here. So, yep, yeah, there we are. So it, it's, it's very, quite very easy to implement once you have integrated and you can use my file as template. It is, it's not difficult at all to create this kind of application and you can go really crazy so you can uh, create like uh, like the whole integration with uh, providers like Google is supported I mean you see all the providers that are supported so when you want to integrate it by yourself in an application it is just crazy the amount you have to spend and invest to just develop something like that when you want to do it your own API and again what I like really on Superbase is that it's just it's kind of open source the data is always yours so the example the database you can even set up your own database and connect it to the Superbase so wherever you want your database so you have your data and that's what I missed on Google's with uh, Firebase you cannot control the data you don't get out the data you need to request it and you don't know so Google holds your data and that what I really liked here is that you own your data, you control it. You can also install Superbase by yourself. You can install it on your own computer and run it from there if you want. So you not even need to use them service if you don't want to. So it's quite, it's, it's really amazing what they did. And uh, yeah, I said, I would really recommend because it is very difficult to go all through that and I hope my application, the application I created, it just should show uh, in simple ways how you can handle that. So basically I can go quickly through it. So how I did it. So I created helper classes with where I uh, take care with authentication. So where everything is handled with the authentication. Also, what I did is example um, with the profile. So, because the profile is actually connected to your user account, that is uh, with the ID connected, and it also fetch automatically your profile right away into the cache, so you carry it through the whole app. So it's not like that you always fetch it. It's always you fetch it only on the start when you need it actually, and then. What else? We saw already the intro, so that's the way I set it up. You can also check out the Superbase example. They set it up a little bit different, but I like it to have it separated, so I have more control over it. I don't like, you know, my files all cramped in one file. So that basically just deals all with the Superbase stuff. So where you connect, that's all what you need basically to connect to the Superbase. It's it's that simple. Then. I have just uh, another helper class with uh, for database where I have like because I like or I love to reuse code I don't want always write over and over again the same thing so I, I just with generics because basically what you do you insert data you update data and it's you use the ID most likely so you delete the data you need the ID so that's the way how I deal with it. So you can, again, you can check out the source code, see how I did it. So basically all those uh, kind of function, they deal with uh, the way it is set up. And you see also, this is actually this uh, code you need from, if you want to integrate it, just you like from the table, then insert the values you want to insert then single, that's only one time. If you remove it, then it's basically that's multiple objects. And then just execute, and the value you only need when you want to return the value. And basically, you can see it in this function that returns the same back. Then, uh, ah, 
what is a little bit tricky to integrate is the real-time thing when you want to get data, and I can show that also quickly on the messages. So if you, by the way, that's, uh, that's here, the real-time stuff, when you want to real-time connect, so your data. So it connects, and then basically with all those you channels again, I ask you to just check the code. It should handle everything. The only uh, thing you need to watch out is like, that's a little bit of weird thing when you wanna get it back past the data, you need to quite dig in it. And I don't know if that's a nice way I need to talk to them and ask if there's not a more nicer way to get your data. I don't know why they don't uh, send back the, like you cannot create a model, but you get like, uh, uh, dictionary back and you need to destruct the dictionary and then you convert when you finally got the to the part then you basically use the dictionary and <laughs> convert it into your object so it's a little bit of a it took me quite a while to figure that out because there was no data available there's no one did anything like that so it was quite a kind of a challenge to until I figured it out oh that's yeah that's how you do it. But again, once you have those things integrated, it's, 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 it's quite straightforward to use. I think, yeah, that's most likely that's about the app. It is not that crazy complicated to actually set up Superbase and use it. I would say it is, it, once you know how the steps working, you can integrate it super nicely into your project and it has really, I felt the benefit as a, as a indie developer, it is like has the benefit that you don't need to worry about the back end. It handles quite well. You can of course go more complex too and I don't know if I can show that with another project when you, I don't know, anyone has experience with uh, Postgres or the scripts? There you can go quite crazy on it. So you can do basically everything, everything. That's like, I, I d developed an app and I could really, I, I don't need the backend for that anymore. So you can go so crazy with those scripts. And yeah. Okay, I, I think it is basically that what I want to show. And I have to excuse, I'm not uh, used to speak in public, so it's probably not the nicest and the best way, but yeah, please, I try to show how to integrate uh, Superbase, what you can do, and yeah. If you have questions, please feel free to just ask. All right, thanks you very much. Big round of applause. Yeah. We, we all know how hard it is to do live coding. Yeah, yeah, it's like I need to get used to Everyone it. Everyone must cheer you up when... Yeah. I think it's great, to be honest, to have errors when we do live coding. I mean, because people might yeah. do the same error, and yeah, that just is solving it live, this is the hardest part. Not being overwhelmed by the, yeah, the error itself. Just, uh, um, and I yeah. said, here's the GitHub. So I, I have, unfortunately, I don't know how to make this nice QR code. Teach you how to. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> that would be so yeah. nice. That's like, because uh, if you want to check it out, I, I just yeah, make a picture of it or so. Then you can check it out and download it. Maybe give a star you if you want to. Hmm? You want to do the QR code live? I know. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, we'll, it's, we'll it's do it uh, just just after. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll be. And then we'll put it back. So, um, all right. So yeah, I think it's awesome. storage, uh, real-time database, get, uh, getting data, uploading data, uploading images. That, that covers mm. pretty much 90% of it, 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 people. It covers, yeah. yeah. And, and um, I think the best thing is just to really look at the code because it, it just should explain everything more than if I try to walk through everything, it's just probably not an ending uh, to take too much time to yeah. do it. But you saw it's, it's very simple when I set it up. Okay the beginning errors in the uh, beginning, but once you get it run, it is, it's quite smoothly. So you, you log in and upload pictures, whatever. It's quite nice. 
All right, I'm sure we have a lot of questions. So, yeah. guys? Yeah, questions. Okay, thank you. First of all, uh, I don't know, I want to say that it was a good introduction for Spabase. Oh, thank I you so much. Yeah, I have two questions for Spabase. So, first of all, is, uh, can you show me the code for the get messages from real time? Sorry, one more time? Uh, the get messages from real time. I mean, no, I mean the X code in X code. X code? Yes. You Let showed me, me that uh, we can get a message as a real time. Yeah, you can get the message real time with uh, this function yeah. here. Yeah, so in there, I saw that there has the argument as a payload. Mm. Uh, da, 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 payload, yeah. Uh, this is uh, the real time uh, kind of. Oh, yes. This so is I'm from. Just wondering, that, is it? This one? Yeah. I this is from um, the super base, basically. So I'm just wondering, that, is it comes from as a JSON or JSON format or some other super I think it is. Uh, I have no 100%. It comes actually as a dictionary. Uh -huh. That's how I know it. It's, it's probably you send it as a JSON, but it will be converted by the package as dictionary. So you get it, and that's quite difficult to actually, I still try to figure out what's the best way, and actually they changed it, so I have to, I was working on that and they added it. Before it was just a record and suddenly you had data. So you need to kind of destruct all this stuff and then it's, it's not a very elegant way, I know that. It's a little bit kind of, uh, I'm wondering if there's not a better way to do that actually. And second question is that, uh, is it, you know, in Firebase, they support the uh, FCM to give a uh, push notification. Is it possible in Firebase? Unfortunately, how they do that, they have like uh, edge functions, but you need to use another service. You cannot do it with Superbase directly. Okay, thank yeah. you. Any other questions? No, but they're not dumb questions. Yeah, so you have a user, right? And mm. you can have like multiple identities. Like, for example, you have the same phone number, same email, but you log in with different IDPs. So I'm just curious how Superbase handled that. Did they just create like, different users based on like, different IDPs? Have you encountered issues where you have to handle like, users with the same phone number or email, but they have log into different IDPs and you have to have issues with managing the, the, the users? IDPs, I, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. Like different identity uh, providers, like you're ah. with Google, you're with Mail. No, you, I, I think you can make, of course, if you have different emails, you can make more accounts with it, but if you use, example, uh, Google, and you would log in with another, what i aware of, you can only, like, if you use a provider, then you can only use that provider, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, uh, for example, Gmail, like Google with one email, and I use mm. the same email login with different identity provider. Uh, would probably create, uh, I, I think it would just create a new account, probably. Yeah. It would, because it would not, because it does not know it's you, actually. When you have a new, you pro log in example with uh, another ID, then how would it know that it's actually you? What I know is Superbase can handle when you have a phone number and email, that can handle that. So if you have log in with a phone number, you can also log in with an email. And perhaps if you have like already signed in with Google or your name matches and your email address matches, that would probably also work. So if it's the same as said, the email would be the same as your, uh, example, you sign up with your uh, Google email, but not use the social network yet. 
I think then it would work. First of all, thanks for speaking. I really enjoyed it. I'm the one user using Firebase in oh. my side projects, and my, I mostly use Firebase as an awesome fire firestorm. And mm. what I'm suffering is when I every time use Firebase, it's really hard to use the query. And then <laughs> the, at the code itself, and it's when you type the code in your in your Xcode, it's really verbose and mm. kind of like really limited when you find like that specific data. In this, Firebase, but compared to the Firebase query, is it kind of like a little more free to use the query instead oh, of the ab ab Absolutely, you can use this, the RPCs. So you can make a remote procedures, they call it. So you write basically your query inside of uh, Postgres, and then you can connect it to the RPC, and then it will, you can make it like, let me, maybe I can find something that you can see how crazy you can go with queries. Because I developed an application, I had like to, I have to merge a lot of stuff, and I, I made it by, oh, hopefully I can find it now. But probably not, that's always, let's see if I have it maybe still in the history. Uh, actually, I can show you that maybe even in the, In my original file, let me see. Because I have a project on here on Superbase, I created, and look, yep. Example, I created this app, and I use like super crazy stuff by creating those uh, procedures. Let me. Yeah, you can see here, um, this is actually what I created and you creating something and you combining stuff and it, it zoom in? Was, oh man, let me see. Yeah, so basically you're creating like uh, your functions, super base functions. And you can connect, so they, they give you data back. So they send, you can write like super crazy. You can get amazing crazy with that. And, and, and they, like co you combine, you, you can do action, whatever. And then they give you back the, all the data you need, what you want. And it's, once you know how it works, it's not that complicated. And you can like, I know too, I think it's not easy to merge things in Firebase. So if you want to combine two tables or so, it's not very convenient. So it, it's quite, quite uh, powerful here. So because it used the Postgres, so you can super get super crazy with those well, charts. Like, Superbase is already DMS, just like uh, having a no SQL UI, you know? is it right? Sorry, one more time? So it's like a Superbase is a RDM, RDBMS, like using Postgres, using the NoSQL UI. Right? It uses uh, SQL. Yeah. Oh. The relation. Relational database, yeah, correct. And second question is mm. what our company is using Firebase right now, and is, re is it, do you have any experience of migrating Firebase to Superbase? And you know, Superbase is the alternative of the Firebase, so. I, I tried Firebase, but I, I told the reason in the beginning, I did not like that Firebase keeps your data. You cannot get the data out of it. So it's it hiding the data from you, and if you want to get your data, it's quite a big hassle. I hear you can request those, but you need to go there so you're not controlling your data. Uh, that's why I actually never really tried Firebase, because I did not like the business model. I won't control my data, because that's my, you know, basically that's my, Money, right? The data is my money. So I don't want another company control those data. I want to be able to, whenever I want, to get just get them. And, and that's what you have. Whatever data you put out, you see those data. You can write. As, I mean, the really cool feature on Superbase is actually that you can uh, basically connect it to your 
you can even set it up that you have an uh, instance at your home and you can mirror it from your running instance to your home instance. So all the data will be, everything will be copied. And you can home develop everything. So I have, like, you can install it on Docker. Let's see if I have one installed, I don't know. So you have one locally and remote. So you can, it's amazing what you can do actually with the thing. So you can copy the data itself and the auth data to the user data? Yeah, you can copy everything. It goes, it's connected to the Superbase data and you can just retrieve all your data. So yeah. you don't have any experience migrating Firebase to Super, you just started from the beginning? Yeah, unfortunately not. I, I doubt, I mean, it's, it's a different concept. You have to set up everything else and you need to get your old data. That, that might be the challenge from uh, Firebase to get your data and convert into SQL, I guess. But overall, I think it depends what you need it for. But I believe like Superbase, when you want to control your data is the best answer. You have the data. And as said, that was my main reason for using Superbase is I control my data. So, how was the speed compared to the Firebase in your experience? I think the speed is quite, I can show you that on later on, I have my app oh. and I run it there and it's quite fast, so I, I don't, I mean, the thing is with Superbase, you need to know that, and they changed it, that's a good thing, they changed it. So, right now it's basically in the region where you are. And there's a fast, because it's very closer. But they say, they, change that so for in the future you will have the ability actually to be sharing multiple instances around the world so your data will basically kind of mirrored to other servers around the world so the data is more closer to that user so the speed should be vastly improved because in case happened to me that's why i said it when in, in the introduction you should put it there where you are closest to I, I did by accident America, and I wonder why is it so slow? Why is it so slow? And that, that was basically the reason for it. It's just too far, the data. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Oh, there's one. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve. Thank hey. you for sharing. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Currently, I'm using Firebase Firestorm. Mm. It was really weird when using Firestore that I can't search for the full tap <laughs> property. Mm. So I use another database like using iPolia. Mm. So is it possible for searching full tap property? I, I think you can integrate the what I did to for not on, on data itself, but on like application, like you have uh, f uh, search applications, you can full search documents. So you can integrate, it's not even difficult to integrate if you want to full search. It's very straightforward. I have to also in my application integrate it. So once you know how it works, it's quite straightforward. And another question is, Firebase have dynamic link feature? and it would be deprecated in the 2025, like universal mm. link, and the Superbase have those features. What is that? Dynamic link, I never hear it from. I, I think they have some, what I know, kind of backup system they have integrated. I think that is possible that you can go back with backups, it's kind of. Back. It's more like, you know, you have a, in, in a profile, you have users, then you have mm. user ID, and then they generate links that, if you are going to click on that link, you can actually navigate to the specific screen. I'm not sure either, yeah, I'm not sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for your uh, amazing, amazing 
Ah, it's not amazing, but yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, and then so, uh, uh, you, so, you showed me the you saw us, uh, function. Super base function? Maybe? The yeah. super base functions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what languages can you Postgres, does Postgres go? Uh, oh, just Postgres specific uh. functions? And yeah. Right, let me see if I get it up again. Yeah, that is Postgres, uh, PostgreSQL, it called? It's like a Pacific, uh, this is a Pacific Postgres function. But I, I think you can even use other, I don't know exactly, I never tried it out. But uh, yeah, yeah, here it's got PostgreSQL, that's the language here. Yeah. Is it possible to send uh, already existing database manually to super-based instance? I think so, yeah. You can, uh, you just export your SQL. Does it, does it have uh, import history? Or Ooh, I don't know about that one. But I think you just can write it with normal SQL kind of uh, code you can write an importer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like any other SQL database. Basically the same code you know from another database would work in Postgres. It's Postgres, so That's it's... actually one of the yeah. best things about uh, Superbase. It's, it's using SQL, so you have your own database, you can export and then re-import using SQL uh, queries. Questions? No? All right, big round of applause again. It was amazing. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you.